Hey everyone, I'm Travis Gregg. Welcome to Indiana University's Department of Recording Arts. I'm going to show you how to install a 2D card into your Metric Halo Mobile I.O. ULNL 2. It's a pretty easy process, so let's get started. So your 2D upgrade kit shipped with the 2D card, of course, a new back panel, the ADAT I.O., little tiny feet, which will go under the master board, we'll talk about that, a 764 hex wrench, in case you didn't have one, and a uh, cool new sticker that goes on the front panel, you know, audio bling, very important. So you'll also need a Phillips screwdriver, standard size, everybody should have one, and needle nose pliers. And then of course, the UNL2. Can't do this thing without the UNL2. Now, let's dive in. We're going to use our 764 hex wrench to take out all the screws on the front panel and the back panel. The ones on the side of the long ones, we need to keep those separate so we don't damage this when we put it back together. Now keep in mind, you're opening up an electronic device. Electrostatic discharge could happen, so ground yourself somehow and try not to work on your 70s shag carpet. Here we go. Phillips screws around our digital I.O. also have to come out, including the power one right here. Of course, all of these analog ring nuts will also have to come off so we can replace the back panel. Lots of screws. Those metric halo guys are making a robust box that you can take anywhere, but it certainly takes a lot to take apart. If any of them are a little bit tight like I had problems with them, just take your time, go easy, don't destroy your box. So that should be it. We can now slide off our side panels, just set these aside, and of course the top lid, we'll set that aside as well. So we see the inside, here's the front, this is our analog, analog side, it has all the power input, mic input, mic preamps. See the transformers, really well designed board. If you know a lot about this stuff, just check it out. It's really well done. And here's our digital I.O. as well as the master board. This is what we're going to have to pull up and, and put feet underneath. And this is the bridge board that we're going to have to take off to do that. Since we've taken off all the screws and such, we can actually pull off our back panel just to sort of get it out of the way. As you can see, we have these little clips that are in place that we'll just slide it up and over gently, not to break the connectors, of course. There we go, back panel gone. Now, you're going to want to hang on to this because it's got your serial number. You know, write that down somewhere since your new panel won't have that serial number. So, we can now pull off this bridge board. If you can look inside of there, we actually have some silicon glue that's holding it together. Um, there shouldn't be very much on there. You should be able just to just sort of pry it off with your fingernail. Just to make it loose. As you can see, it's kind of coming off for me. Yeah. It's coming off pretty easily for me. So you just pry some of that off, and that way you can actually pull this, this bridge board off of there. Voila, there's our bridge board. You can see where it was connected. Now, we'll set this aside as well.
Now here's our front panel ribbon cable. We'll pull that off the master board. Just pull it straight up. Keep keeping sure not to bend our pins here. That would be bad, right? And now we're going to pull this whole master board up. It's got these little PEDs clips that are holding them on. Little tiny metal clips that are actually holding the, Brit the master I.O. board down to the casing. So we'll pop this up very gently. It's going to take some force, but you don't want to actually break your board. So gentle yet forceful, right? Pop, little, little tiny pop. Slide your hand underneath, pop, here goes another one. And we'll get the last one right there. So there you go, slides right out. Be careful not to get your caps caught on the meter ribbon cable or anything. So there's our master board. Now our 2D card is going to sit on top of this going between the two. And it's going to use all of these multi-pin connectors. We want to put on those feet underneath those connectors so that when we push down on the 2D card, we don't break this board. So let's get those feet. Set this aside just for now. And here's those feet. We'll approximate where those are going to go. Get this one off of there. We'll put one right here where that top multi-pin connector is going to be. We'll put two where these other connectors are going to be. Like that. Two connectors right there. I'm going to put the last one underneath the third one, the fourth one, right there. So now we have four feet underneath where the master board is going to be. We'll put this back into place and clip it back into the PEDs. Again, be careful with those caps that are right underneath the ribbon cable. And just gently push down on those PEDs until they click back into place. There we go. And now we can actually push on those connectors with the 2D card and not break it. So get your 2D card out. Pretty simple little board here. Here are the connectors that we need to, to get into place. You can see these male pins will fit right into these female holes, and all these female holes will fit into our big multi-pins that we were putting our feet underneath. So let's line them up really carefully, making sure the first hole goes into the first pin and set and whatnot. Kind of get them started, make sure we're lining up on all of them. None of the pins should be bent, just make sure you look out for that. And we'll, once we're sure they're kind of lined up, look really closely down in here if I can get a view for you but that pin and that hole are pretty much lined up and same thing can be said for all these other ones hard to get on the video but so once we're all lined up we're sure it's all lined up we'll gently push down on those connectors make them slide into place and if any of these caps are in your way just slide them out of the way just a little bit they shouldn't they shouldn't really be in the way but if they touch just gently push them out of the way And as you can see on mine, that cap was actually touching. So we just slid it out of the way a little bit and popped right into place. There we go. So the connectors are already in place all the way down on all four of the big pins and, of course, on the ADAT down there. So let's connect our ADAT. ADAT's pretty simple, one tiny little ribbon cable. We'll slide it on here, make sure that the pins line up properly. And before we forget, let's get our ribbon cable back into place for our 
meter bridge. Now note, there's a multi-pin jumper base here and you want the one closest to the meter bridge. You want it, the one that actually has enough pins. That makes, that makes it easy, count the pins, right? Okay, and now we can get our back panel on. Note our new back panel has that analog, or the ADAT IO, which is always great. So we'll slide this back over our XLR buttons and all the other little connectors. If you notice I'm holding the back of the connectors to try to push it on, that, that kind of helps out a little bit. And that's looking pretty close. We can probably put our screws in there to hold this in place now. A lot more screws. Here we go. When putting the screws back in, make sure you're using the right ones. Of course, we have the Phillips for all of the XLR connectors and uh, even the 5 pin for power and for our Spitify O. And then we have our short hex screws for everything that's going into the top panel and the bottom panel and then we have a long hex screw for everything that goes into the side panels make sure you don't get those separate those make sure you don't get those confused because they'll actually end up cracking your uh, displays And that extra screw that came with the 2D card is for the A.IO. So you'll line that into the new holes that you have and just easily put the screw in. Voila. And now we can put on our side panels. Remember that the screw holes that you have go to the front so that you can put your ears on, your rack ears. Uh, this makes it easy. We'll get those into place and put our top panel back. Now again, if you look at the top panel, there is actually sides, the cutouts. The cutouts on here, you see, actually go to the back and they go over the analog I.O. Don't get them confused because it, it won't line up very well for you. So we'll just drop that into place. Slide our side panels on over both the top and the bottom. And I'm going to start with our long screws on the sides just to make sure everything lines up just right.
Okay, and the very last step is of course what we said, the audio bling. We can pull off this old sticker. We don't care about this non-2D stuff. We're cooler than that, right? We'll pull this off really carefully. This. This we're going to put somewhere cool like, oh I don't know, how about across Altec? Look at that, metric halo power amplifiers. That's what they're coming up with next, right? And then we take our Metric Halo 2D Expanded Bling. I'm going to put it right there in the little clean spot that was left over. I'm trying to get it straight. There we go. Now everybody knows how cool you are, right? Well, there you have it. You've upgraded your ULNL2 with a 2D card. Upgrade the firmware via the console, which you should download from Metric Halo's website. You'll be really surprised at all the new features and more power that you have. It's a great upgrade. Congratulations on your purchase, and again, from Indiana University's Department of Recording Arts, I'm Travis Craig. We'll see you on the next one.